Welcome to this session of the Amazon EC2 15th birthday event. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I'm joined by Joshua Virgin, General Manager of AWS Outposts at AWS. Joshua, welcome back to the program. Thank you, it's great to be here again. So 15th birthday, a tremendous amount has gone on in the last 15 years, but I want to understand what brought you to AWS? What excited you about cloud and EC2 in particular? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a great question and it's kind of a fun story. Uh, I actually worked at Amazon back in the 90s for three years as a software engineer, when I don't think anybody you asked back then would have said that cloud was in our future. And so I'd kind of obviously kept in touch with people over the years and I was working at a customer who interestingly enough had moved off of AWS thinking that they could build a better cloud. And then of course, over the years found out that it's actually quite difficult and was in process of moving back to AWS. And so I reconnected with some of the senior leaders who I was still friendly with. And they said, you know, come back in, the water's fine. There's still a lot of opportunity. And it's, it's really been true, right? There's been just a tremendous amount of growth in the last seven years that I've been back. And obviously over the last 15 years for EC2 in general. Well, this 15th birthday, not only marks a big milestone for AWS, but also for the cloud computing world that it serves globally. Talk to me a little bit about the impact over the last seven years you've been there and 15 years of EC2's life. Well, I mean, we've really been transforming every industry that you could possibly imagine, right? As everyone's had to develop a plan to move to the cloud to take advantage of the opportunities for innovation, for cost efficiency, for developer efficiency, for operational improvements. And so EC2 is one of the foundational services inside of AWS. And you know, a lot of things are built on top of it. And so it's been really great to work with all of these different customers and financial services and telco and gaming, you know, healthcare, you name it, all around the world. So 15 years ago, EC2 obviously started quite small. Can you talk to us about some of the early trends that are emerging from the hybrid space? Yeah, I mean, we're fond of saying here that it's still day one, and that's very true for the outposts and the, the hybrid business in general at AWS. The, the early trends, if I had to kind of bundle them together, would be that first of all, people are operating in more places than they ever thought they would have to. These are you know, big customers, manufacturing, telco, healthcare, public sector customers, people in gaming. They serve customers around the world. That's a trend that's kind of irregardless of industry. That's what we're seeing. And so of course, having an outpost available everywhere, we're up to 60 countries now, having local zones in many countries, which you know, we hope is our long-term plan, having wavelength zones with lots of partners, you know, that's why we're doing those things because customers are telling us that we need to operate everywhere. It's actually the reason we went from one availability zone, or excuse me, three availability zones in one region 15 years ago to 25 regions and 80 availability zones. And of course, hybrid is building on top of that. The other thing we're seeing, you know, real specifically for hybrid is uh, low latency, local data processing and data residency. Across every industry, those are the needs that are driving people to adopt hybrid technology. And they're the ones pushing us forward here at AWS to innovate on their behalf. Talk to me about some of the innovation in the last few years alone that customers are helping drive where those regulations are becoming more and more critical. We're seeing more importance on security and ensuring that you know, customer data is secure, protected, but also accessible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're fond of saying at AWS that security is job zero. You know, we take it incredibly seriously, even though of course it's a shared responsibility model where we secure the underlying infrastructure and then provide tooling and services on top of that for customers to create the level of security that's appropriate for their application. Obviously a government workload or a banking workload is different than a mobile game, even of course as customer data needs to be secured in all situations. So with outposts and with local zones, what we're giving people the ability to do is ensure that their compute and their storage are in whatever country or municipality or city or state that they need them to be. So you could take something as diverse as a bank or a healthcare uh, company where they might need to have that compute and storage literally in a specific facility because of regulations or in a specific state, you know, that's kind of happening around the world. You also see something you might not have thought about, but customers in the iGaming space, so that's mobile betting, Tipico and FanDuel are a couple early examples of those for outposts. 
where as it becomes legal, at least in more states in the United States and more places in Europe, the regulations are requiring that the cloud computing, if they want to use it, is placed in a specific place. So the only way you can do that is either, of course, if we had a region everywhere, which we don't, or if you have something like outposts. Otherwise, you'd be forced to revert to like a bare metal solution and kind of take on all that heavy burden yourself. Your developers would be more, you know, less efficient because they'd be using AWS in one place and bare metal kind of hardware somewhere else. So, you know, it's still really early, but I've been pleased to kind of see that kind of adoption across those diverse industries. It is really early, as you said, the philosophy at Amazon, AWS, is it's, it's day one. Give me some feedback from customers now where, you know, we, we see a lot of different reports that suggest where businesses are, enterprises are in terms of cloud adoption. What are some of the things that you're seeing where you really think hybrid is going to be an absolute game changer? Yeah, I mean, one example that comes to mind is telco, which is one of the biggest industries with the smallest amount of cloud adoption to date. And so I think a lot of that was driven by specific requirements in that industry that required on-prem components for that ultra low latency. You can imagine they needed the compute and the storage to be at the cell site or distributed around the United States or other countries. And so that's where you have examples now with DISH networks where we just announced a strategic partnership with them. They're going to be using this combination of the new small form factor outposts that we're releasing later this year they're about the size of a pizza box or a couple pizza boxes. They're also going to be using our network of local zones that we're building out, 15 of them across the United States. And they'll be using our regions for workloads that are, of course, less latency sensitive and that can kind of be run centrally. So it's really kind of one of the, the best examples I can think of where people that were held back, you know, by the technology, by the offerings, are now enabled to move really quickly. And so I think you're going to see a lot in that space and other industries where before they had to kind of uh, not move to the cloud because a portion of their workload needed to remain on-prem. And now we're delivering a continuum of offerings, including you know, to the very smallest locations. Let's look forward into the next decade as barriers to adoption are being removed daily. You mentioned Dish Network. I saw that they're going to build their 5G, their core 5G network on AWS. That's huge. That's a big signal for the telecommunications industry. But what are some of the things that you think we're going to be able to open this book and there were maybe a crystal ball in the next decade and expect? Yeah, I mean, I, I, if I had a crystal ball, my roadmap would be perfect. Uh, Wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be, it would be great. So if anybody's offering one of those, I'm, I'm, I'm taking. But what I think you'll see is that the, the day one metaphor is going to continue. As, as big as AWS has become, and I think we're really proud of the accomplishments and innovation we've delivered for customers over the last 15 years. As I mentioned, we started with one instance type and one region, and now we have over 400 instance types in EC2. That's a lot of choice for people. And that's just EC2, right? We have another 185 or 200 services these days. I can barely keep up with them, which is exciting in its own right. And so the reason is that we're doing all that innovation is that customers are telling us what they want. And a lot of that is, although they're driven to move to the cloud and they really want to move there quickly, somewhere between 75 and 90% of technology spending is still in the traditional hardware software space. So again, I'd like you to think about that 15 years in, you know, at uh, the run rate that we're at, and obviously with other people in this space, there's still so much more to go that has already moved to the cloud. So I think you'll see more new instance types, more locations, more form factors, you know, from outposts and us using outposts to deliver infrastructure like local zones and wavelength, which are built on top of outposts. And so we don't force people to pick and choose between moving to the cloud and running the kinds of workloads they're already running, right? We want to be driven by the customer not force them into a narrow way of working that we think is best. That's probably the hallmark of AWS is giving people the choice. They can use EC2 and manage their own databases. They can use RDS or one of our you know, 14 purpose built databases depending on what their application needs. And that's true across the board, storage, compute, machine learning, container services, hybrid offerings of course, which I uh, manage for the AWS business. We're going to continue to do that. So the choice is going to proliferate. The performance is going to continue to improve. We're going to continue to bring down pricing and increase price for performance. And we're going to hopefully make things easier and more cost-effective for people 
whether that's for their developers or their finance people, so that they can innovate on behalf of their customers versus handling all that undifferentiated muck and heavy lifting of managing the infrastructure themselves. That customer centricity has always been key to AWS. And I just sum up what you said, I think we can expect to see a ton more from AWS announcements, customer driven choices for customers. Joshua, thank you for joining me today. Happy 15th birthday to Amazon EC2. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. For Joshua Burgeon, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.